Over the past three years, I've spent a little more time in Framer than a normal human being. And after starting hundreds of projects, I've discovered a few hidden things that improve both our websites and workflows. In this video, I'm revealing some of those things so you can also take your sites to the next level. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to take a look at is called the VH problem, the viewport height problem. Uh, the problem with viewport is that we, framework designers, thought that we we're using it correctly for the longest time and then we had to realize that we aren't. So basically, if you don't know it already, viewport is usually used for hero sections. Let's say we have this example project here. Uh, it has a hero section, you can see on the left layers panel, I am selecting the hero. And on the right, you can see that the height is set to 100 VH. This basically means that it is filling up 100% of the given viewport height. This is really useful because if I have a large screen, you know, it fills up the available space. If I have a smaller screen, it still fills up the available space and it doesn't reveal more sections below itself. And yeah, it's really dynamic. It will work on my phone. It will fill up the available space here as well. So yeah, it's, it's really nice. However, there's a little issue with it that we didn't really notice. So basically, if you take a look at this now, if you preview this and start changing the viewport height with this little uh, like dragging interaction, you can see that the content within the hero will start cropping at a certain point. And when this is cropped, we can you know scroll, but we will not be able to reveal that part anymore because it is just staying 100 VH. And now I don't know what is written here and I don't know what these buttons do. You could also say that, yeah, Nandi, you're probably not gonna see a viewport height that is so small, but I still think that this is something that we should you know, focus on and you know, pay attention to, to make sure that no matter the screen size, no matter you know, what device you're using, you're gonna get a great experience visiting this website. So the solution for this little issue is that instead of setting the viewport height as the regular height here, we need to set this to fit content. So now you can see it's just fitting the content. Uh, we need some space on the top and on the bottom. So I'm going to just set padding top and bottom 100. So now you're going to see that, you know, it's fitting, but now the hero is just too small. Um, we would still need that dynamic viewport based height. So let me show you how we add that. So we are selecting the hero and on the right, we're going to set a min height. And this is where we're going to set the viewport height. So viewport 100 VH. And now you're going to see that by using a combination of fit height and min height 100 VH, we achieve the same effect. However, when we look at this website on a smaller device, you're going to see that we're no longer going to crop the first lines of the text. And even if like everything is cropped below, we're not seeing the buttons or anything, we can still scroll and reveal that information. And yeah, uh, it's just it's just a better way to use viewport height. Okay, so the second thing I want to talk about is the site structure. This will definitely make your life a lot more easier when you know creating responsive framer websites. I used to struggle with this a lot, but once I found this site structure, I was like, okay, this is it. And ever since I've been using it. So you can see that this website is also built using that. We have the desktop breakpoint, within that we have a navigation on top and then three more items. So this is what you, you're going to usually see. Or if you are using layout templates, then basically navigation and footer will be inside of the layout template. And then you're only going to see the main right here. Now, within the main, what do we have? We have all of the sections <laughs> that easy. Uh, we just have, you know, in this case, the hero section and then the features section below. And this is how we keep our you know website nicely organized. And then what I also usually do is I make sure that I set the top and bottom padding for each section on the section frame. So for example, on the hero section, you can see top and bottom padding is set right here. I also set the left and right padding for some reason uh, here, but what I usually do is I set the top and bottom on the hero section or not the hero section, but the section frame. And then uh, within, I usually have a content frame and that content frame has a left and the right padding, which again, for some reason, this doesn't have it, but usually this content frame has left and right padding, the, uh, the section frame has top and bottom padding, 
and also the content frame usually has a max width value so our you know side content will not be like stretched out on like really large monitors so yeah basically that's it and also make sure that you're using tags when when you are setting this up so for example the main section has to have or the main container on your site has to have the main tag uh, under accessibility here and the sections will be of course sections so yeah that's about the site structure now on to the next one so this one is actually really really useful when you are building animations interactions because in some cases you might run into something your animation looks a little weird um, elements are jumping in a weird way and in some cases you might not even like know that this is the issue but it's, it's a great thing to have this in the back of your head and know that okay this might be the problem let's just see if if this uh, actually fixes it so this is um, the fact that in most cases we need to match the transition settings when we are using nested components so in many cases when we're you know building interactions in framer we have nested components within each other so for example in this case we have the accordion component which is nested in this larger accordion block so you can see that accordions one component and within we also have the individual accordion component so if these transitions are not matching so for example on this accordion accordions component we have transitions set to let's say three seconds and then within the accordion itself we actually have transitions set to 0.5 what we're going to notice is that this will start looking a little weird because you can see that the accordion is closing and opening it much faster compared to how these other accordions are moving uh, and repositioning themselves so if we want to have like a nice experience where these transitions are in sync we have to make sure that this right here actually has the same point five time and you're going to see that now it's um yeah much better in many cases this can look even weirder when there are like multiple movements and not just a simple like pushing uh, or something like that and yeah it's again just good to have it in the back of your head and be like okay maybe i have to check if my components have matching transition settings obviously the next one is really really annoying if you have an accordion component on your page like this one here on the framework university site you're going to see that as the accordion component gets larger and you know because it's opening it's just pushing the content below itself away in an instant way and i don't really understand why this is happening why we can animate this part of the accordion and why cannot we animate the pushing away of these sections below i don't know why framer doesn't do this um, because basically how framer works is that everything that you want to animate has to be in one component so for example even if these components these accordion components weren't in this um, in this component in this larger group then they wouldn't be animated so when one open opens down the others wouldn't be pushed away in this animated way because you can see that the other accordions are nicely moving in a smooth animated way but again this section is not so of course we don't want to wrap this boy and this boy in the same component because that would be crazy so that's why we have a little solution for this so if you go to the frame university site and search for layout jump preventer component you're able to copy this component onto your clipboard which will solve this issue really quickly so once you have that on your clipboard you're going to go inside of your accordion component or basically any component that is changing either the height or the width uh, of itself when going between different variants and we're going to just paste the component in here with common v so i already have it here so i'm going to just activate it so you can see avoid layout jumping is right inside of the default primary component it's really important to not not nest it within uh, further so if you have a frame here inside do not place the avoid layout jump preventer inside of that frame so it has to be on this level and we have to make sure that it's set to absolute positioning it's basically an invisible component it just adds the functionality or the fix to your site then we just have to set the direction so it's either horizontal vertical or both in this case we are trying to fix that vertical movement so 
are according is animated in vertical direction because the height is changing and that's why the section builder gets pushed away so now that we have this here and we preview it you're gonna see that the little footer is nicely pushed away in a smooth animated way which looks amazing and you know these are small things but man like i don't know maybe it's just me but for me these are uh, these little details yeah they matter a lot now the next thing I want to talk about is actually a new feature. It's called REM, R-E-M. This little bad boy will actually help us creating responsive text in a much easier way. What we used to do is we went here to the assets panel, text styles, and we were setting our responsiveness here for different breakpoints. So we were adding breakpoints and like setting all of these like individually. It, it wasn't really a great experience. If we wanted to change these, we had to go through each text style one by one, change all three breakpoints. If breakpoints were changing in width, they weren't updating on text style. It was a nightmare. Now with RAM, it's much easier. All we have to do is set all text layer basically on our website in RAM units. So for example, now this heading here on the top of the page is set for three RAM. Now you may be thinking, Nandi, okay, I, I understand like 16 and 20 pixels, but what is three RAM? Well, RAM is a unit that basically multiplies the base font size or the root font size that is set for the document. So that font size actually is set on the desktop level. So if I select the desktop, I look here on the right, base, 16 pixels. So now we can know that 3 times 16 is 48. So, okay, our text size is 48 pixels, but why 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 is it something that actually helps help us helps but why is this something that actually helps us with responsiveness in terms of text layers? Because so far it doesn't seem like it's helping or anything. However, let me show you how it helps. If every single one of these text layers that you use on the site is using your RAM as a unit, then what you can do is you can go on these different breakpoints and override the base value, right? Because RAM will still be a multiplier of the base value. If the base value is changing, then all of these text styles or text layers that are defined in RAM will be changing as well. Now on this page, I only have the headings in RAM, so those are the ones that are changing. But you can see that it's just much easier scaling all of the text within the breakpoint with just a single value. And I can do that here on the phone as well. So again, if you want to make your life easier and have responsive text on your site in an effortless way, make sure to use RAM as a unit. Quick tip, I usually set smaller text like something that is below 16 or around 16 to fixed like pixel values because I don't really want to scale them down on phone. Like 16 looks great on phone and desktop as well. Um, so yeah, I just keep them fixed. So yeah, basically that's it. By the way, if you want to learn more about RAM, make sure to check out the full tutorial about it. It is going to be down in the description. And my last tip is absolutely life-changing. It is probably going to change how you build sites in Framer because many people still start in Figma when they are building websites because they feel like, uh, it's like, I don't know, easier to like start there. I don't know why in Framer they feel like they are restricted and like they have to use frames just like in Figma. I, I don't know, like I can understand kind of because you have these breakpoints here and it's like a little bit like, okay, but where do I experiment? Well, let me show you where. So actually Framer has a hidden feature. It's called Canvas Pages. If you go to the top left, click here, Preferences, you go down canvas pages, now it's enabled. So now if you go to pages here, you can see canvas pages. You can just click here and create a new canvas. And this right here is a canvas, an infinite canvas, just like Figma, where you don't have any breakpoints, you don't have anything. This is where you can really like explore different ideas, create design assets and, you know, experiment. And yeah, you are not restricted to like stacks. You can like, you can use absolute positioning and you can like put little designs together. And the great thing is then you can just copy it straight to your homepage and you can, you know, start building with it. So yeah, make sure to enable canvas pages and yeah, have fun designing here.
So yeah, basically that's it for this video. Make sure to leave any comments down below if you think that these are useful or if you knew about them or if you have any other tips uh, for us. So yeah, basically that's it. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more and I'm going to see you in the next one. But I also wanted to say that please check out Freemium University because it has great resources, tutorials and mixes that are probably going to help you on your favorite journey. And now I'm going to see you in the next one.